the month of mercy and blessing. Fasting does not mean to stay hungry and thirsty and make it troublesome for you. Fasting is an act of self-restraint. Do not speak evil. Do not see evil. Do not think evil. Do not do anything indecent. Fasting is a trial for the believers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's triumph in this trial according to the guidelines of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. I'll be there for you all through this glorious month of Ramadan. Let's make it more fruitful and reward worthy. Share it with me every day throughout this present month. Let's benefit from Ramadan. Meet Dr. Zakir Naik in Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir, next on Peace TV. 1 is to 1, 1 is to 5, 1 is to 10, 1 is to 50, 1 is to 100, 1 is to 700. This Ramadan too, the census of returns for a good deed will shoot up by 70,000%. Be prepared. Welcome, O Ramadan. Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Mas'ud al Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, He who guides towards something good will have reward equal to one who does it. Sahih Muslim, Volume 3, Kitab ul Book on Government, Chapter 791, Hadith Number 4665. You are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Oh, you who believe, give charity. For the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan. Welcome, O oh Ramadan. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah be on all of you. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and I welcome you to this series of programs entitled Ramadan a date with Dr. Zakia. Today we will be covering the topic Ramadan an introduction. Dr. Zakia, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakia, no introduction to such a topic would be complete without you defining the terms. So could you firstly define the term Ramadan? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam the word Ramadan is derived from the Arabic word Ramida or Ar Ramad, which means intense scorching heat and dryness. It's also derived from the Arabic word Ramda, which means sun baked sand. In some terminology, the word Ramadan it signifies the intense heat in the stomach due to thirst. When a Muslim fasts, the thirst that is there, it produces heat in the stomach, which is defined as Ramadan. Again, Ramadan, it has another meaning. It means that the good deeds, they scorch the sins and the evil of a Muslim. So Ramadan is a month in which the sins are scorched away by the good deeds, like how a son scorches the ground in the same way. And heat, normally, it helps in forming, molding or reshaping virtually every matter. 
In the same way, Ramadan helps in molding, shaping and reforming the spiritual and the moral aspects of the human being. That is the reason we term this word as Ramadan. Second definition of terms, if you like, is Saum or fast, as it's sometimes or mostly it's translated in English. Um, could you shed some light on what are the implications of the term fast or Saum? Saum is Arabic word, which is singular. Siam is plural. Saum or Siam in Arabic is derived from the word Sama, which means to abstain or to restrain from the normal things, whether it be eating, drinking or talking. And a person who observes Saum or abstains from these things is called as a Sa'im. And this word is used in the Quran in Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 26. When the angel speaks to Mary, may Allah be pleased with her, who is the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and this word is used. And if you read this word, it says that I have vowed to fast to Allah. But here, the meaning of the word psalm, fast, doesn't mean refraining from eating or drinking. It means refraining from speaking. Because when we go to the context, when we read one verse before in the Quran, Surah Maryam, chapter number 19, verse number 25, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Mary, may Allah be peace with her, that shake the palm tree towards yourself and the ripe dates will fall. And the next verse, Surah Maryam, chapter 19, verse 26 says, they eat and drink from them. And then it says that when you meet any human being, tell them, I have vowed to fast for Allah and I will not speak to any human being. So because here it says about speaking, the word psalm used here means that to abstain from speaking. But the word psalm in Islamic terminology, in the Islamic Sharia, it means a person who does an act of worship. And with intention, he does it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he or she abstains from eating, drinking, or nourishment, as well as from sexual intercourse, or from lustful human recognition. In short, the word psalm in Islam means a person who abstains from the fast breakers. And the fast breakers, the things that break the fast, are food, whether taken by mouth or by nose, or drink, any kind of drink, whether it be water, milk, fruit, juice, any drink taken from mouth or nose, or any nourishment for the body taken from any source. As well as abstaining from a sexual intercourse. In short, it means abstaining the stomach and the private part. This is what it means Islamically. And this is the basic meaning. But if you go ahead with the broader meaning, it does not mean only abstaining the stomach and the sexual part from the things that break the fast. It even means that along with the fasting of the stomach and the sexual parts, there is fasting of the tongue, of the eyes, of the ears, and the other limbs of the body. That is the reason when we use the word psalm, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1903, our beloved Prophet said that a person who does not abstain, does not leave false action and false speech, etc., Allah does not require of him to abstain from food and drink. That means, besides abstaining from food and drink, you also have to abstain from false speech, false actions, etc. And this message is further repeated by our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the Sahih Hadith of Sayyid Targib, Moin number 1, Hadith number 1068, our beloved Prophet said that a person, while fasting, when he abstains from food and drink, he should also abstain from false speech, from obscene language. And if a person gets angry, and if he argues with him, or fights with him, he should say, 
I am fasting, I am fasting. So if we look at it, when a person fasts, there are basically three things that you should abstain from. Number one is the stomach and the private parts. They should abstain from things that break the fast, that is food, drink and sexual act. The second is that the other parts of the body, the tongue, the eyes, the ears, the limbs, even they should fast. Fasting of the tongue means a person should abstain from backbiting, should abstain from sandering, from telling a lie, should abstain from gossiping, abstain from rumor mongering, abstain from vulgarity. Fasting of the eyes means he should abstain from looking at things which are unlawful. Like when he says the Namiram, he should lower his gaze. He should not watch un Islamic movies or un Islamic things. Fasting of the ears means he should abstain from hearing things which are haram, which are prohibited. Like abstain from listening to music, abstain from listening to songs which are un Islamic. So this is the way how the other parts of the body also fast. And the third thing is the fasting of the heart and the mind. They should abstain from things which take away person from the worship of Allah, from the zikr of Allah. So this overall is the meaning of the word psalm. Subhanallah, it certainly has a lot more involved in it than I was expecting. Thank you. Dr. Zakir. Are there any other compulsory fasts other than the month of Ramadan that a Muslim must observe? The fast can be broadly categorized into the fast, that are obligatory, and the other is the Tatao fast, that is the voluntary fast, or the non-obligatory fast, which inshallah will be dealing maybe on the episode 31. As far as the obligatory fasts are concerned, you can classify it under four types. The first, as we are discussing, the obligatory fasts during the month of Ramadan. The second is, if a person misses the fast of Ramadan for any reason, cover up the fast miss. It's known as Qadha fast. The third is, fasting for expiation of the sins. If you have committed a sin and you have to fast, give a kafara, that's the third type. And the fourth is fasting if we are vowed to fast. So these are basically the four types of fard fasting which are there in Islam. Jazakallah khair. So brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll see you after a short break. It is a friendly message by Dr. Zakir, mother of all evils. According to the World Health Organization, every year, millions of people die due to the consumption of alcohol. My colleagues, the medical doctors, nowadays say that alcoholism is a disease. Therefore, we have to be sympathetic towards a sick alcoholic person. If alcoholism is indeed a disease, then it is the only disease that is sold in bottles. It is the only disease that is advertised in the newspapers, in the magazines, on radio broadcast stations, on television satellite channels. It is the only disease that has outlets licensed to legally spread it. It gets a revenue for the government. It is the only disease that causes violent deaths on the highways. It destroys family life and increases crime. It is the only disease that has no germs or viral cause. But our Creator, the Almighty says, in His last testament, the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amun, O you who believe, inna mal khamru wal maifuru, most certainly intoxicants and gambling, wal ansabu wal azlam, dedication of stones, divination by arrows, rich for min amali shaitan. These are an abomination of Satan's handiwork. Fashta nibuhu lallakum tuflihun. Abstain from such abomination that you may prosper. Alcoholism 
is not a disease. It is Satan's handiwork. Abstain from it that you may prosper. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. We cannot simply say, I'm going to follow whatever my parents did. That this is my source of gaining knowledge of Islam. Because if my parents didn't get their knowledge from Rasulullah then there is a possibility that their knowledge is incorrect. This is something we have to realistically look at. It is Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we're discussing the topic, an introduction to Ramadan. Dr. Zakia, another question of great importance regarding the fast in Ramadan. Unfortunately, there are many brothers and sisters who neglect the obligation of fasting during the month of Ramadan. Can you give us some words of advice and indeed from the Quran and the Sunnah give us some proofs of the fact that it is an obligation upon the Muslim to fast in Ramadan. There are many words in the Quran as well as many say hadith which very well clarify that it is fard for the Muslims who are supposed to fast, that they should fast, it's a fard. We shall deal with the details for whom it is a fard, inshallah, tomorrow. If you read the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 183, Ya ayyuhal lazina amunu, O you who believe, Qutiba alaykum is sayam, Kama qutiba ala lazina min kablikum, La lakum tatakun, Which means, O you who believe, Fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to people who came before you so that you may learn self-esteem. You heard the Arabic word used is Qutiba. Qutiba means prescribed. It is written. Amongst the other things which are compulsory, it has been prescribed. It has been made compulsory for you also fasting. As it was made compulsory for people who came before you. That means it was compulsory even for people that came before. The Jew, the Christian, etc. But it's also made compulsory for the Muslims. Ya you are in Amun, for the believers. And further it says, point number one is compulsory for you. Point number two is compulsory for people who came before you. Point number three, la lakum tattakun. So that you may learn self restraint The Arabic word tattakun is derived from the word waqa, same as the root word for taqwa which means that you have to fear yourself, you know, from the wrath of Allah. In short, the meaning of the word taqwa, it is uh, somewhat like God consciousness, piety, means righteousness. So here Allah is telling, fasting has been prescribed to you so that you may learn self-restraint, so that you learn taqwa, you increase yourself in taqwa, in God consciousness, in righteousness, in piety. And when a person fasts, what happens? That he feels hungry. And normally when a person is well fed, that gives him more energy to many a times do things which are also prohibited and to commit sins. The moment you fast, your action towards things which are prohibited goes down and the barometer of taqwa goes high. That is the reason fasting helps you to improve your self-restraint and increase the taqwa level. Furthermore, it is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2. Verse number 185, Allah says, Shahru Ramzan al-Lazi, unzila fi hil Quran, hudallin nas. That Ramzan was the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance to humankind. Wa bayyinatim min al-huda wal furqan. And in it are signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. Immediately after that Allah says, the people who witness this month, they should fast. They again become the fard. 
for the Muslims that if you are in this month of Ramadan, you should fast. And it gives exceptions that if you are ill or if you are traveling, then the period can be made later on, etc., etc. But here this verse says, it is compulsory for every Muslim to fast in the month of Ramadan. And the exceptions are there. Furthermore, there are several Sahih Ahadith which make it compulsory for the Muslim to fast. I'll just quote one which is the most important one. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad he said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Iman, Hadith number eight. Our beloved Prophet said that Islam is based on five pillars. The first is, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. The second is establishing prayers. Akim Salah. The third is giving zakat. That's obligated charity. The fourth is performing hajj. That's the pilgrimage to the holy city of Makkah. And the fifth is observing psalm. That is fasting. So from this hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Iman, hadith number eight, it says that fasting is one of the pillars of Islam. Not only is it fard, it is one of the principles, one of the pillars of Islam. Amongst the five most important things for a Muslim, one of them is fasting. So from these evidences we come to know that fasting is fard for every Muslim. Well, I don't think it can be put in much of a clearer way, to be honest. And I think that people should take advice and fast this Ramadan. Inshallah. The next question regards the history of fasting actually. Um, was the time period for the observing uh, of a fast and abstaining from the things which break the fast, which you've already mentioned, always the same since the beginning of time or for the Muslims? As far as the Muslims are concerned, when the first time it was mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 183 which I mentioned earlier that fasting was fard at that time the Muslims used to fast three days in a month later on when the verse of the Quran was revealed of Surah Baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 185 which I quoted the second time that Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed and in it is guidance for the humankind and in it are signs for guidance and judgment, right and wrong. So the Muslims, when they witness this month, they should fast. So then it became first for the Muslim to fast the complete month of Ramadan. First it was only three days every month, then it became one full month, only the month of Ramadan. As far as the things that break the fast are concerned, one of the things that break the fast, it is sexual intercourse, even with your wife. So previously, when this verse of Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 185 was revealed, it was not mentioned in detail. So the Muslims at that time, they used to abstain from sexual intercourse, approaching their wives for the full month of Ramadan, even during the day and night. And it was very difficult for many of the Muslims, many of the Sahabas. And that reminds me of a quotation or incidence which is mentioned in one of the commentaries of the Quran. If you read the commentary of the Quran, the Qurtubi, volume number 2, page number 210, it mentions there that Umar bin Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, months after speaking with the Prophet, late in the night, he comes back home. And he has the urge to sleep with his wife. And he spends the time with his wife, and he has sexual intercourse with his wife. In the morning when he gets up, he feels very bad. He's ashamed. He immediately goes to the Prophet and he says that I ask pardon from Allah and His Messenger for what I have done. And my soul was attracted towards my wife. And I had a relationship with my wife in the night. Is there any way that I can be pardoned or is there any way that I can escape? So the Prophet said, is it true that you actually did this? He said, yes Prophet. The Prophet was shocked. How could Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, could do a thing at that time it was prohibited? He said, Yes, Allah's Messenger, I did it. Is there any way I can be pardoned? So the Prophet said, No one besides Allah can give the command. 
and alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah immediately after this the verse of surah baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 187 was revealed it says that permitted to you during the nights of the fast is approaching your wives and then it says hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahunna that they are your garments and you are the garments that means your wives are your garments and you are the garments of your wife and allah says that we know what you do secretly in the night but allah forgive you and from now onwards you can approach your wives during the nights of the fast and you can eat and drink till the white thread of dawn is differentiated from the black thread so when this verse was revealed later on surah baqarah chapter 2 verse to 27 then the rules were bit more relaxed that they could have sexual relationship with the wife during the nights but during the day they have to abstain furthermore as far as eating was concerned previously before surah baqarah chapter 2 verse number 187 was revealed the muslims could eat and drink after the sun sets but the moment they sleep after that they can't eat then they can eat only the next day after sun sets so there is incident one of the sahabas ka is mallab bhi the them he worked very hard and he was fasting and when it was time to break the fast he comes home and he tells his wife that i want to have some food so wife says that there's no food in the house i'll just get it from outside and she goes out to get food so because he was tired working the full day by the time the wife comes back he goes to sleep when the wife comes back to the house she sees the husband has gone to sleep so now she says finish once he's gone to sleep he can't eat so that night he could not eat the next day he had to fast and by evening the next day he faints and the people go to the prophet that this is what happened because once you sleep you can't eat later on this verse was which i said earlier surah baqarah chapter 2 verse number 27 which says besides approaching your wives at night you can eat and drink till the white thread of dawn is differentiated from the black thread so then the rules that we follow today that fasting means that you have to abstain from food and drink and nourishment as well as from sexual intercourse right from dawn unto sunset and having the intention that we have to be the allah subhanahu wa taala it's an act of worship so this is the history how we find the god this is very interesting and uh, i think we call it easy as compared to uh, sahaba alhamdulillah brothers and sisters i hope that you have derived as much benefit as i have myself from the answers that dr zakir naik has given us jazakallah khair for dr zakir naik giving those answers alhamdulillah and tomorrow join us at the same time when we will be discussing an introduction to ramadan part 2 assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh hafizin dakirin qanitin khashi'in يمنا صبر ورق بدم والبائس رمضان قد اهل الصيام واقل مصيدا اهلا وخلا لجوه كل a friendly message by dr zakir the most profitable business would you like to know the business in which you earn the maximum profit the secret is given in the golden quran in surah al baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 261 the example of those who spend their wealth in the way of allah is like a seed of grain which grows seven spikes in each spike is 100 grains and allah multiplies his reward to whom he will if you spend your wealth in the way of allah you will get a return of 700 times in business terminology you will get a profit of 70000% is there any business you know of in which you will get a better return invest today in the way of allah 
Beast TV, the solution for humanity. He who observed the fasts of the month of Ramadan out of sincerity and hoping for the reward from Allah, he will have his past sins forgiven. Let's make it more fruitful and reward worthy. Welcome, O Ramadan. Be prepared. Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Anas bin Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Seeking knowledge is compulsory on every Muslim. Sunan ibn Majah, Volume 1, Chapter 17, Hadith Number 224 one is to seven hundred, 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 one is to seven hundred. This Ramzan too, the sensex of returns for a good deed will shoot up by seventy thousand percent. Be prepared. Welcome, O Ramadan. Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. You are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan Welcome O Ramadan It is Ramadan It is Ramadan Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace, mercy and blessings of Allah be on all of you. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and I welcome you to this series of programs entitled Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. Today, we will be discussing an introduction to Ramadan, part two. Dr. Zakir, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dr. Zakir, previously, uh, as according to what you've already said regarding the history of fasting uh, Muslims were commanded to fast for three days and then one month is this an indication of a contradiction in the Quran Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahabi ajmain actually there is no contradiction in the Quran Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter number 4 verse number 2 afala yudadabbarun al Quran do they not consider the Quran with care? Do they not ponder over the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many contradictions. So, no two verses of the Quran will ever contradict. But there is something like abrogation, which people differ. According to me, abrogation doesn't mean contradiction. Abrogation means the verses that were revealed later, as Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 106. We do not cause any of the words or ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be forgotten. But we replace it with something similar or better. So many a time when things that were prohibited or things that were made compulsory, they came in stages. Not that it was difficult or made easy. Sometimes things are difficult or made easy. Sometimes things initially were made easy so people get used to it and then difficult. For example, regarding prohibition of alcohol. The first verse to be revealed was Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 219, which says that in alcohol, in intoxicants, is profit and loss. Loss is more than profit. It didn't say it was haram. Only gave a guidance that loss is more than profit. Then Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 43 says that when you are intoxicated, don't offer salah. It didn't say that if you are not offering salah, you can have intoxicants. If that what was mentioned, then there is a problem. It only said... Do not be intoxicated while offering salah. And since the Muslims have to offer five times salah, that means having alcohol, intoxicants in the morning without other question. 
Maybe in the evening if you had, by the time you get up in the morning, you become sober. The final prohibition came in Surah Maidah chapter 5 verse 790. Ya ayyuhal nathina amunu. Oh you believe. Inna ma khamru al maisuru. Most certainly intoxicants and gambling. Well, ansabu al aslamu. Dedication of stones, divination of arrows. Rishtum minamini shaitan. These are Satan's handiwork. First tanibu. La lakum tuflihun. Abstain from this handiwork that you may prattu. So here we come to know that the ban, the prohibition on having intoxicants, alcohol, came in stages. Similarly for fasting, no two verses of the Quran contradict. No, there are some people who say, oh, no, the Quran, now that was did not be followed. I disagree with that. Abrogation doesn't mean a contradiction. Abrogation means the last verse of Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse 790, includes the first two verses. If it's banned, overall, it's even banned while offering Salah. So same way here, if you read Surah Bakra, chapter 2, verse 83, when it was said fasting is compulsory, it did not specify the time three days. That we get from other sources. The Quran doesn't specify. It only says fasting is fard. Then it says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 85 that you have to fast for the full month of Ramadan. So, what was mentioned about three days every month, fasting, was actually from other sources. If it was mentioned in the Quran that you have to fast for three days, and then it says after that fast for full month, then there's a contradiction. Furthermore, previously, it was said, again, in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 184, that you have to fast, but those who cannot fast, or those who can fast with difficulties, they have two options. Either fast, or feed a person who is poor, who is indigent. So that time, it was not fun. If it is difficult for you to fast, yet you can fast, or you can feed a poor person, but fasting is better, but not further. Now this was for general. But afterwards, when the verse of Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 85 was revealed, then it became first for everyone. Now this was refers to those people who are ill, terminally ill, or they are very elderly people. That means mentally they are fine, but physically they cannot fast in their life. So if you are ill, terminally ill means ill for a long period and your health may not get fine. Or if you are so elderly which you cannot fast and every year you keep on getting more and more old. So here it says, if you can fast with difficulty, fine. Otherwise, feed someone indigent, a poor person. Similarly, as far as having sexual intercourse, previously the rule was, you should not have sexual intercourse in the full month of Ramadan, whether you are on it. But this is not mentioned in the Quran. The Quran only says fast in the month of Ramadan. This we get from the other sources. The Quran is not contradicting. It is actually first fasting three days was in fact easier. Then, fast if it's difficult, if you don't fall, don't fast. Feed a poor person. So it was easier initially. Then later on it became difficult. As far as the approaching a wife, initially it was difficult. That you cannot approach the full month. And then Allah made it easy. So no two verses of the Quran contradict. But because the Quran was revealed in a span of 22 and a half years, so many things that were prohibited came one shot immediately or it came in stages. Many things which were further came immediately or came in stages. So fasting, because initially it was difficult for the people, it came in stages. But Alhamdulillah, with all these things, no two verses of the Quran ever contradict Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The next question of great importance again is, um, when it comes to the fast, is it simply the doing away of food, drink and sexual relations or other Implications. The things which are fard for a person who fasts, as you mentioned earlier, one of them is to abstain from things that break the fast. That is food, drink, and having sexual relationship. But besides this, one another important factor is, is the intention, is the niyyah. Any deed without the niyyah, for the akhra it is useless. The niyyah should be there. The niya, the intention is very important. Because we intend to fast to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's act of worship. If the intention is not there, then there are various different types of fast. For example, a person may fast for political reason. A person may fast as a passive resistance. A person may fast as a hunger strike. I'm starving, hunger strike, to get 
whatever he wants, you know, the people fasting, non-Muslim fasting, a person may fast for health reason, maybe for dieting, he may fast maybe to lose weight, he may fast, it may be a medical treatment, but all these fasts, they don't have intention, the niya to be the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the reason in the Islamic Sharia, when we abstain from things that break the fast, it should be accompanied by the niya. Without the niya, the fast is useless. It's very important. Niya is compulsory for every act of worship, including fasting. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 2, in the Pukha Zakat, chapter number 370, hadith number 2198. Our beloved Prophet said that when you have intention to approach your wife, to have a relationship with your wife, the moment you have intention, even that becomes charity. The Sahabas asked, having relationship with your wife is also charity. How come, O oh beloved Prophet? The Prophet said that if you have sexual relationship with people who are not your wives, if it's unlawful, isn't it a sin? They said, Ya Rasulullah, yes, it is a sin. So that is, if you have sexual relationship with the person you're supposed to have, that is your wife, with the niya, that's an act of charity. That means niya is very important. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 29, that we have created for you everything on this earth. When Allah has created everything in this earth for us, not one-tenth, not one-fifth, not one-fourth, not half, but everything for the human beings in this earth. So, but natural, our servitude should only be to him and no one else. If, while worshipping him, we worship somebody else, then it is useless. We have to only worship him and no one else. We can't say that I am praying two rakat for Allah and two rakat for somebody else. We can't say that I am sacrificing one goat for Allah and the second goat for a king or a ruler. All our worship should be to him alone and no one else. And that reminds me of Hadith, the first Hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, where Umar may Allah be pleased with him. He says that the beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Innam al amala bin niya. Your deeds are based on your intention. Your actions are judged by intention. And anyone who has migrated with the intention for the line of Rasul, he has migrated for the line of Rasul. But if someone has migrated for the wealth in this world, or for marriage, he has migrated for the wealth and marriage. The intention is important. Why did you do it? Why did you migrate? Why did you jihad? So intention is very important for any act of worship, including psalm that is fasting. Thank you very much. So brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll see you after a short break. It is this book. This book, people, they should know about it. Our strength inside. This is the proof. The irrefutable proof. The irrefutable evidence. This Quran changed the Arabs. Or oh, Ummah of the Quran. It's very powerful because the word of Allah. If all Muslims hold to this robe of Allah, no power, no force on earth can do anything to us. Can do anything to us. Learn Quran. Learn Hadith. Learn Islam. The way to peace. Darus Salaam. Authentic Islamic books in world's major languages. A golden treasure for every library and every home. Darus Salaam, global leader in Islamic books. Prophet said, The difference between a Muslim and a Kufr is Salah. Then it is your duty and my duty to prove to the people that this is the true religion. Make everybody equal in the sight of Allah. And there's no symbol, no image, no idol. We worship him directly.
You are watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we're discussing the topic, an introduction to Ramadan. Dr. Zakia, furthermore, regarding the intention, still on the intentions issue, does one always have to make intentions regarding when you're about to fast? And secondly, the timing of the intentions. Can you just say something a little bit about that? As far as intention is concerned, as I mentioned earlier, that intention is a fard. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sunan Nisai, Book of Fasting, Hadith number 2331, our beloved Prophet said, a person fast not accepted if he does not make an intention in the previous night. That means for all the fard fasting, compulsory fasting, making intention the previous night is compulsory. It can be any part of the previous night. It can even be till as late as just before the Fajr time. Any time of the night you can make intention. A person can make an intention in the beginning of Ramadan and it can be valid for the full month of Ramadan. Unless he breaks it if he's sick or if he's traveling, then he has to again make intention. But one intention is also sufficient. And many people think they have a misconception that verbally saying it aloud is a must, which is not a requirement. I don't have to say verbally that I intend to fast. Because my intention is a niya from the heart. And I don't know of any hadith which says that the Prophet or the Sahabas ever said loudly that I intend to fast. Intention is in the heart. And one intention is sufficient for the full month of Ramadan, unless, as I said, it's broken. But this is only for the fard fast. For a voluntary fast, fast which is not a fard fast, intention is not a fard because there's a hadith again mentioned in Sunan Nisai in the book of fasting, hadith number 2323. One is the prophet, he tells his wife that, I want food to eat. And the wife said that there's no food to eat. So he said, okay, I'm fasting. That means his intention was not there before, in the previous night. He made it on the spot. He abstained from before dawn, but his intention was afterwards, in the morning. So for the voluntary fast, it's not compulsive to be made early the previous night, except if it's a very important voluntary fast like the Ashura, the 10th of Muharram, Ashura, or it can be the day of Arafat. It's preferable to make intention before because that's a very important fast. For all the other voluntary fast, it's not compulsive to be made before previous night. For the Niya, there are other three things which are very important. One thing, if it's by force, and if something is broken, then it can be forgiven, or by error, or by forgetfulness. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 106, that after a person has believed, then if he does something of unbelief, does something of kufr, except by force, that means if he does by force, even kufr or shirk, Allah will forgive. So if someone forces a person to break the fast, his niya was in there, he can be forgiven. And Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 286, that, O oh Lord, please do not catch us. Please do not hold us responsible. When we err, when we make a mistake, or when we forget. So if a person in his forgetfulness breaks his fast like has water, Allah will forgive him. Or if because of a mistake, Allah will forgive him, which we shall deal later, inshallah. Subhanallah. There's a lot of very important information there regarding intention which I'm sure is going to be massive benefit to everyone who's listening and watching indeed another thing which has been bothering me for some time is the fact that fasting is one of the pillars of Islam correct now but is there anything which uh, differentiates the act of worship fasting the pillar from the other four pillars Perhaps. As I mentioned earlier that there are five pillars of Islam and all of them are important. But the differentiation between Psalm, fasting, as compared to other pillars is that the other pillars of Islam, whether it be Salah, 
whether it be zakat, whether it be hajj. It can be done by a person to show to the others, for yeah, to be seen or to be heard. You know, maybe I want to show myself, you know, I'm a very pious person, so I'm offering salah to show to the people. You know, I'm going for hajj to make a show of it. Can be possible. Can be possible I give charity so that people will say I'm a charitable person, for sure. But fasting cannot be done for yeah. Cannot be done to show other people why. A person can easily fast, and when no one is watching, he can have food, he can have drink. If a person who truly fasts and abstains from things that break the fast, he is doing it only for Allah and no one else. So that is the difference between Psalm and the other pillars of Islam. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1904. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, Allah says, that all the deeds done by the sons of Adam, they are for themselves only. He does it for himself. But fasting is for me. And I will reward him. And fasting is a shield. A person fasting, he abstains from obscene things. He abstains from lying. And abstains from yelling. And if a person gets angry at him and abuses him, he says, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. So in this hadith there are various aspects mentioned. First is, that fasting is only done for Allah subhanahu wa no one else. It's not for Yah. Secondly, fasting is a shield. It's a protection. It keeps you away from wrong things, from obscenity, from vulgarity. And if someone is angry, it says that you have to calm him down, say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Because in the hadith where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, in Sahih Bukhari, Volume number 3, Hadith number 2038, that the Satan runs in the circulatory system of the human being like the blood. So when we fast, we feel hungry. When we are hungry, you know, the energy level goes down. And the things which required for doing things away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so taqwa level goes up. Because when we eat food, it goes into the blood. When we restrict food, the restriction of the pathway of the Satan is there. So that is the reason when we fast, our taqwa level increases. Dr. Zakir, Ramadan is truly a wonderful month. And I've felt it, always felt myself, that um, brothers and sisters come together. And there seems to be a wonderful bond in that month between us all. Is there any special message about Ramadan and brotherhood? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that... The Muslim is one body. All the Muslims, they are one body. And if we analyze and look around, all the Muslims, we are different. We are diversified as far as language is concerned, as far as color is concerned, as far as the race is concerned, as far as the country where we come from, we are diversified, different. But we are united under one statement. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. That there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. So based only on this kalma, the Muslims throughout the world are united. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakin wa unsa wa ja'alnaakum shu'ubam wa qaba ila lita'arfu inna kalamukum inda Allah yatkaakum inna Allah alimun kabir which means, O oh humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you shall recognize each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not caste, is not color, is not race, is not sex, is not wealth. It is taqwa. It is God conscious. It is piety. And this month of Ramadan, Allah says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 183, So that you may learn self-restraint, so that your taqwa may increase. So more your taqwa increases, all the Muslims in the world, they are united. Because we are like one brotherhood. Caste, color, creed cannot differentiate us. We are one. And in the month of Ramadan, the taqwa increases and the brotherhood increases. And the best example of brotherhood was even at the time of the Prophet. The Sahabas came from different countries, different colors, different races. 
We have the example of Abu Bakr and Labi, please with him. He was a Quraysh. We have the example of Bilal and Labi, please with him. He was from Ethiopia. He was a Ethiopian. We have the example of Shweb and Labi, please with him. He was Roman. We have the example of Salman Farsi, may Allah be pleased with him. He was from Persia. So we have from different, different countries, different, different days, different, different colors. And we go down the line of the history of Islam. Further, we have the same thing. We have Imam Bukhari. He was a great scholar. He was from Bukhara. He was not an Arab. We have Muhammad the Conqueror. He was from Turkey. He was a Turk. We have the example of Salman Ayubi. He was a Kurd. Then we have the example of Allama Iqbal. He was from India. So what we know that we have Muslims from different parts of the world. And this brotherhood, we learn more in the month of Ramadan because our taqwa level increases in Ramadan. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, this hadith of Bukhari, volume number one, hadith number 468, our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, that one faithful believer, one Muslim, to another Muslim is like a brick of a wall and he clasped his hands like that. And the beloved Prophet also said, it's hadith of Sai Muslim, volume number 4, hadith number 6219, that the beloved Prophet said, one Muslim should never oppress the other Muslim. He should not fail him. He should not lie to him. He should always be truthful. And one Muslim cannot go against another Muslim. So that is the brotherhood which a beloved Prophet taught us. And the best we learn is in this month of Ramadan. Jazakallah khair, uh, Dr. Zakir Naik, for this uh, enthralling and very, very interesting uh, set of answers you've given us today on an introduction to Ramadan. Brothers and sisters, I hope that you have derived as much benefit as I have myself. Uh, from the answers that Dr. Zaki and I has given us. Jazakallah khair for Dr. Zaki and I giving those answers. Alhamdulillah. The brothers and sisters, join us again the same time tomorrow when we will be discussing when is fasting obligatory and exempted. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> مسلمين مؤمنين للإله عابدين شهونا صبر وعتق وقولوا تبيه صدق يهونا صبر ورق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أذل الصيام وأطل مصيدا أهلا وفي الله تهو في كل A friendly message by Dr. Zahir the last testament of God. It is a proclamation to humanity, a fountain of mercy and wisdom, a guide to the erring, a warning to the heedless, an assurance to those in doubt, a solace to the suffering, a hope to those in despair. Al-Quran, the most positive book in the world, the final message of God to humanity. Let's read it, understand it, and follow it. Peace TV, the solution for humanity.